We are joined now by Dr. Eve Espy, whose research focuses on long-acting reversible contraception. Dr. Espy, it's great to have you today. Thanks for having me. All right, so you hear a lot about LARC, but talk to us a little bit about where it stands. Well, so, so LARC has really made a big difference for us in this country in terms of uh, empowering women to, to prevent pregnancy and reducing the unintended pregnancy rate. So for many years, uh, the unintended pregnancy rate ran about 50%. Uh, but in the last decade, it's gone down to 45%, which is a big public health achievement. And a lot of that has been attributed to more use of long-acting reversible contraceptives. What about when you're talking about postpartum, though? Is that something that's become more commonplace? So postpartum, uh, immediate postpartum mm -hmm. LARC, which means placing an IUD mm -hmm. at the time of either vaginal delivery or C-section, or placing an implant prior to hospital discharge, mm -hmm. that's been a little bit more complicated. Uh, two issues around that, one is training and one is reimbursement. Um, the, the training piece is, is actually not that difficult, mm -hmm. but the reimbursement has been very difficult. You may have heard that Medicaid in numerous states now covers immediate postpartum LARC, but those reimbursement mechanisms have been quite cumbersome. So, so we still have a little ways to go on that. What kind of response do you get from patients when that's brought up? Many have really um, appreciated the opportunity to have the option to initiate contraception early so that they don't have to, to think about that or undergo a, a separate procedure when they come back for their postpartum visit. So we have good uptake when we're able to offer it. We were chatting earlier and you mentioned reproductive justice-based counseling. Yes. Talk to me about what that is and why it's important. Sure. So what we've seen with LARC um, is an enormous increase in usage over the last 15 years. So it used to be about 2% of women in the uh, in the US who use contraception used either an IUD or, or an implant. Now it's about 16%. Okay. So along with that big increase, there's been a concern that we are pushing women to use LARC methods because they're so effective. And I think we as providers need to be very careful to ensure that the way we're counseling is to empower women to use the, the method that's best for them and not a method that we think is a good idea for them. So we should still be talking about the, the risks and benefits of the full array of contraceptive methods and ensuring that women have the power to decide. You also work to provide contraception to women in rural areas. It's, this has to be much more challenging when you start talking about LARC on top of everything else. Yes, and one of the challenges, again, even, even for private clinics, mm -hmm. uh, but also yeah. for, for um, FQHCs, for example, is the difficulty in storing LARCs because they're very expensive. Um, Colorado fully funded their Title X program mm -hmm. and found uh, that in their ability to offer LARCs to women across the state, uh, they found a, a large increase in LARC use and they also found a decrease in the teen birth rate, in the young adult women birth rate, and in the abortion rate. So really a big impact if we can implement um, access to LARC across rural and urban settings. If a patient chooses LARC though, does that mean they need more follow-up care and is that an issue in some of these areas? N not necessarily okay. and in fact uh, we're very lucky to have the U.S. Selected Practice Recommendations which is a document put out by the CDC uh, that, that tells us what kinds of follow-up uh, women need for certain contraceptives and both for the implant and the IUD really no follow-up, no routine follow-up is, is needed. So here at ACOG, you're talking about all kinds of issues. What do you want the members to go home with after they have seen your, you speak? Yes. So I think um, I would love to see us improve access to mm -hmm. all contraceptive methods. I'd love to see us adopt uh, reproductive justice-based counseling, shared decision-making in our contraceptive counseling. Um, and I, I, I would love to see us use the U.S. medical eligibility criteria, which is a CDC document that helps us determine who are good candidates for all the contraceptive methods. All right, Dr. Espy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.
ACOG TV has all the coverage you want with the big events and key newsmakers. Be sure to check out our content, which is updated each day here on YouTube from the ACOG 2019 meeting here in Nashville.